back to a new video. Today I'm doing the second video in my little how to dress better series that I want to do on my YouTube channel. And in these videos I'm going to collate and share with you some of my favourite styling tips that I have tried and also just discovered in the last few weeks or months. Nothing comes out of thin air and these are tips that I have learned from other women online, from different blogs, um, magazines, just heard from other people. And I wanted to put it in one place and share with you some of the ones that I have personally tried out for myself and really like. If you haven't seen my first video, I'll have a link down below. But I really love these styling videos and I hope you guys enjoy as well. Before we move on to the five different tips, I definitely want to say that there is never a wrong answer when it comes to dressing our own bodies. Um, it is completely just what we want to do. Please treat these as just some ideas or inspiration rather than rules. Start tip number one is a quick and easy one where it fixes the problem when our trousers and skirts fit um, a little bit too long. This is probably a very common problem for petite girls like myself. I really personally have enjoyed these two tricks and they've been super fun to experiment with. First up is a trick with skirts and this first one is a Rixo skirt and is very very bright, very bright. And it's not a skirt that I absolutely love, it's one of those purchases that I just kind of purchased on a whim, it was on, it was for a great price, it's silk, it's pretty on the hanger actually, but when I wear it, it's not quite right. And in part, the reason is that the skirt is super long and becomes more of a maxi rather than a midi. In this case, as you'll see in a cutaway here, what I'm going to do is that I'm going to tie a knot at the bottom of the skirt, essentially bring the hemline up and showing a little bit more leg, especially on one side or at the front. And I think instantly it makes the skirt look a little bit more tapered and it kind of suits my body shape a little bit more rather than just being completely flowy. I think this is a fun trick and you know, it might just work with a skirt that you haven't been wearing. I was shooting with a friend and she was telling me that sometimes she likes to do this trick when it's super windy and if you're wearing a flowy skirt, you will know that it kind of flies everywhere. You can do a simple tie at the bottom, it's still cute and it solves that issue as well. If your skirt is a little bit long and you don't really want to bring it to the tailor or you haven't had a chance, this is something that you can try to make the skirt work. The second example is this skirt, and this one actually comes at a reasonable length, but just for variety's sake, if I ever wanted it slightly shorter, the same trick works. Both of these midi skirts do have a split, but I've also tried it on skirts that don't have a split. If it's a flowy material, it'll work really nicely, and I really like it. I really like this trick. Both of these skirts are quite full. There's quite a bit of material, so it makes it super easy to tie a knot. It will depend on the skirt, but I think it's a hack that's worth a try. This next tip applies for trousers, and this one is something that I learned recently on the Instagram page of Amy Smilovic, who is the creative director of Tibby. I really tried that pronunciation, I'm sorry if it's wrong. I just thought it was a cool hack, and I wanted to give it a shot myself, and it's been super fun to play with. So her trick is that when it comes to a pair of trousers, instead of tailoring it to your perfect length or to your cropped length, what you can do is keep the full length of the trouser, and then instead tie a little knot at the front of the pants with a little rubber band, and then tuck it under, as well as pin it on the inside, and what happens is that you have like a baggy, kind of style of trouser that cuffs in a little bit at the ankle. It's a baggy, loose and kind of modern style of trouser shape. It's something that is quite out there and I think a lot of people won't like this baggy shape. But at the same time, it's free and it's a hack that you can try with your existing wardrobe as long as you have a pair of full length pants. And why not? I think this trick is all about versatility. It doesn't mean that we have to do this every single day. But if we don't want to go out and buy a new style of trouser, this is something that we can experiment with, with a pair of black trousers, a pair of tan trousers, to create a new silhouette. For me personally, having tried this hack, I think it works best when you have a bit of excess material on the trouser, so it's quite a wide shape, and then you cuff it in, I think it looks nicer than this pair, which is not that wide to begin with. And secondly, I think it's really important that the trouser is quite long, otherwise you get this really awkward kind of three-quarter-ish length pant look, which is not that flattering. In tip number two, I want to talk about necklines and just a little bit of experimenting I've been doing with different necklines and how they kind of work when it comes to balancing out my proportion. In this tip, I'm speaking from personal experience, but I also have a few necklines that I think work for a lot of different shapes and that are a bit more easygoing than others. I have a couple of items with different necklines that I wanted to show you. And actually a few of these are from Petite Studios. 
I think because Petite Studios is suited towards, you know, petite girls, a lot of the necklines feel quite suitable for my shape. The first one I think I'll talk about is the V-neck because it's such a universally, you know, loved kind of neckline. We've got these two pieces which both have a slight V-neck. This one has a collar as well and this one is just a simple V-neck. And I think a V-neck is quite flattering because it elongates this neckline area. And I feel like most people, unless you do have a super long neck, can benefit from this like elongating effect on the neck. I think it does make posture look better, it is quite an elegant cut. And especially with something like this, it's neither too wide of a V nor too deep of a V. It's kind of a happy medium that suits a lot of different shapes. I did a little bit of research on this area because I was curious, but the particular shape of the V can have different effects as well. So if you have a very deep V, it will obviously be a bit more elongating on the neckline area compared to a more shallow V. I think that this is more of like a medium fits all kind of thing, but that's just something to keep in mind. So depending on what you want to do and kind of the illusion you want to create, that's just something that's interesting that I wanted to share. If you had a V-neck in the past that you either loved or didn't love so much, maybe it has something to do with the proportions and the illusions that the V-neck was creating. When I showed this dress on Instagram, I got quite a few questions on it and I want to mention that Petit Studios are running a sale starting on the 24th for 25% off. I have some details down below. When it comes to sizing, I got this in the extra extra small. It runs quite large. So if it's quite large on me, and if I could, I would have sized, I would have taken another size down with this dress. Another neckline that I really like is this square neckline. And this is quite an open style of neckline. So it does show off the collarbone really nicely. And similar to the V-neck, it does have like an elongating effect. Um, in lengthening the look of the neck. With the style of neckline, it's creating a horizontal line just across the chest, and that can be really good at balancing my particular frame. I am quite petite, but I also am pear-shaped, where I'm definitely larger on my hip than I am on my shoulder and chest area. So this kind of just creates an illusion of more balance when it comes to hip versus upper body area. Let me know down below what your favorite neckline is, but this one is also a neckline that I've seen on a lot of different women and I think it looks good on people with a larger chest, people with a smaller chest. It seems to look nice on just a lot of people and a lot of people that I've seen wear this neckline, so this is a personal favorite of mine. Another great option is the boat neck and I personally feel like the boat neckline is just super super elegant. Once again, it does kind of draw attention to this like collarbone area when you have that boat neck and it makes this shoulder area feel a bit wider, which can be very balancing if you want to balance out your shoulder and hip ratio. A lot of these things that I'm talking about work specifically for me and like my slightly more pear-shaped frame. What I'm going to do is that I'm going to link a few sources in the description box below um, talking about all the different necklines and which type of body it suits. So if you're curious about finding something that really is tailored towards your shape, um, hopefully that will be helpful. Tip number three is to not wear oversaturated colors with a white pant. This is a tip that I came across again on Amy Smilovic's Instagram and it just came at the perfect time because I put together an outfit and I didn't love it and I wasn't sure why because in my head they should work out perfectly. When she shared the story I did a screenshot and I'm going to pop it up on the screen to reference what she's talking about, but essentially I find that this has happened to me before where I have style oversaturated colors with white and I'm almost never happy with the way it looks. I don't have a good explanation for it on why it doesn't look kind of classic and stylish, but it just doesn't. Likewise, I do think that white looks really good with neutrals, with earth tones, with what she describes as no color colors. This tip is super simple, it's just a little bit of color theory and just styling color but it's definitely something that I feel like fixes some of the issues I was having with my own personal style and when I do those videos such as like 15 outfits I often will kind of pair white with an oversaturated color. I'll never love it looking back when I'm editing and now it kind of explains why. So this is a tip that I'm super happy to have learned because I'm definitely going to be taking it forward when it comes to styling more outfits in the future. 
In tip number four, I'm talking about sleeve length, something that I never think about, but I have a tendency to enjoy rolling up my sleeves and I usually don't like a super long sleeve. With sweaters and blouses, something I really like is when the sleeve cuffs at my wrist so it doesn't dangle onto my hands or kind of fit incorrectly and too long. This is something that I know is my preference, but I recently kind of learned why it is that I prefer these things. Once again, I'm gonna pop up the original source where I learned this tip because I think that she creates really good imagery that shows this tip really well. So with sleeve lengths, it works on many layers similar to the necklines I was talking about earlier. But the first thing is that if you have a very long sleeve length, not only does it start to look sloppy because you know it doesn't fit well, what happens is that it actually makes the legs look shorter on the person wearing it. And I do think that it makes sense where if your sleeves are super long, then it makes your torso in general look longer and your legs shorter. It makes a lot of sense visually when I think about it and it also explains why I always like having my sleeves kind of cuff in at the wrist and having sleeves slightly shorter as well. And the second tip to do with sleeve length is to never end your sleeves at your widest point. As I've been talking about throughout this video, my widest point is probably my hip and I probably wouldn't want my sleeve length to be right at my hip at my widest point because it does kind of create a vertical line and draw further emphasis to that area. And in a very similar way, if you don't have a well-defined waist, you don't want your sleeve length to end right at the waist because in doing that, it kind of widens out this area further with the sleeve length cutting off there. I had so much fun learning about this tip because it was just so interesting. It makes so much sense visually. It's nice to have an explanation to why we like things or why we don't like things. And this just cleared up why it is that I like a shorter sleeve or something that kind of cuffs in and doesn't fall too low. I'm going to refer back to these dresses. Once again, they're for petite girls, so it kind of is cut in a way that does suit my shape, I feel. This dress has a three-quarter length sleeve, which I just feel like makes the whole outfit feel very balanced, doesn't make the arms look too long, and I think it's quite a flattering but simple cut. And likewise, with this particular blouse, it has this stretchy part on the cuff, and this is what I was talking about earlier. This is something that I really like when brands do. I feel like a stretchy cuff, so you can bring it all the way up and just be able to adjust the sleeve length to what you like. That's another perk of this blouse that I really like, just having that adjustability with the sleeve. With blazers, if you have a blazer or jacket that you want to change the sleeve length of, a very simple trick that I think I showed maybe a year ago now, it's quite a while ago, but taking a rubber band and simply kind of cinching it in and then hiding the rubber band, I'll show you in the cutaway exactly what I mean, but it is a great way to keep the sleeve up on your blazer all day long. Obviously, don't go for something too tight, um, have something that is looser when it, when it comes to doing this trick. I've also tried it with cardigans, with knits, and it just kind of works for pretty much all different type of sleeves. My fifth and final tip is on shoes and how to match them to different outfits, or how to match different outfits to shoes. This is an area that I've been thinking a lot more about myself and doing some experimenting within my own wardrobe and figuring out what shoes match really well with what kind of pieces. Cyber Bailey Their Sandal is a style of shoe that I like to reach for very often, especially in a shade that is similar to your skin tone. This shade is not really my particular skin tone, it's quite pink, but at the same time, it does kind of just create a Bailey Their look, which I think looks quite flattering with a lot of different outfits. For me, a strappy sandal in a nude shade is one of the simplest shoes to match with different outfits. Very rarely do I come across an outfit that doesn't match with these shoes. One particular outfit that I think looks especially good with this shoe is when I want to style a very wide-legged trouser. When it comes to styling a pair of longer, wider trousers like this one, I think this shoe is super important. If I wore it with a ballet flat, I honestly think it would look a little bit awkward. Whereas because these sandals have a heel to it, it's quite elongating. It balances the kind of length and the width of the trouser. If I was to imagine it with a closed toe shoe, other than maybe like a pointy shoe, I feel like it would almost look a bit clunky and definitely just not as flattering. If you don't wear heels at all and you wanted to style a pair of shoes with these trousers, I would say go for a pointy toe. And we'll kind of talk about that now. These are a pair of older slingback shoes I have in a red suede color. And I feel like these are really great options if you don't want to wear a heel, but you still like that wide-legged trouser look. A pointed toe flat I think is a great option to go for rather than like a rounded option. And I think that because the shoe feels a bit more elongated, you can see the point at the front. 
and the shoe doesn't just kind of disappear into like the trouser if that makes sense. So pointed toe will be my preference if I wanted a flat shoe. Next up, we're going to talk a little bit about flats. And I got a question on Instagram asking how I would style flats. I don't wear ballet flats a lot, um, personally, but I do think that they look super, super cute. And my favorite way of wearing them is with a 7A for slightly cropped trouser, where you can see a little bit of the ankle. My least favorite way to wear them, as I said earlier, is with a pair of wider leg full length trouser. I feel like the shoe just kind of disappears into the pants because it's got such like a round, feature or like an almond kind of feature and it looks much better when you can see a bit of ankle with a slightly more tapered or skinny trouser as well. I think being able to see the ankle a little bit when it comes to wearing ballet flats is super important because it does create a more lengthening look on the leg whereas sometimes I feel if there is no leg showing, no ankle showing, it can look a bit stumpier because it is like a flat shoe. You can obviously wear these with dresses or skirts. I think you can wear it with most things other than the really wide legged trousers or really long trousers, as I mentioned previously. Once again, these are what I've personally found myself. Do let me know if you have any combinations that you really like. So for example, what type of shoes you like to wear with a long trouser? What type of shoes do you like to wear with skirts and dresses? I would love to know. Do you have a bit of a formula when it comes to shoes or do you kind of do it on a case by case situation. I am super interested to know. I love filming these videos because it's a chance for me to learn some more styling tips, elevate my own style, and sometimes learning these tips just explains something that I already do but don't know why I do. I do find it quite interesting and almost empowering to learn about why things do and don't work together and it's just something that I am very interested in myself. Be sure to let me know if you have any style questions that you want me to look into so I can include in the next installment of this how to dress better type of video. Thank you guys so much for watching. If you enjoyed it, I would love for you to hit the like button down below. If you want to, I also do weekly fashion videos and I would love for you guys to subscribe. Thank you so much for watching this video and I will see you soon. Bye.